The New York Climate Change Science Clearinghouse is a gateway to information about what's happening to New York's climate, what is projected to happen in the future, the impacts of climate change, and solutions, especially those on how to adapt to a changing climate. You can use the Clearinghouse to find maps, data products, data sets, documents, websites, videos, and more. This video will highlight a few resources that might be of interest to teachers. We'll focus on several examples from New York's coastal zone, but teachers around the state can find resources of local interest. To access the Clearinghouse, go to nyclimatescience.org. On the homepage, you'll find a keyword search box, links that direct you to key maps, data, and documents, links to help you explore impacts and solutions by sector, links to information about key climate hazards for New York State, to different ways to respond to climate change, and to information about taking action. One of the key climate hazards New Yorkers face is more heavy rainfall events, which can lead to flooding. If you type the search term heavy rain into the keyword search box, you'll find resources about building rain gardens, among other things. Some of these resources provide information that you could use to either build a rain garden at your school or to integrate into the way you currently use an existing garden. To teach about how a garden can be a tool to build resilience to climate change by helping to manage stormwater and filter pollutants. Another climate hazard New York is facing is extreme heat, and it's especially a concern in urban areas where buildings and pavement absorb and re radiate heat. Many schools are not air conditioned, and students and staff will have to cope with more extreme heat in the future. A search on extreme heat will lead to resources on the risks of extreme heat and guides on how to adapt to it. If students are working on climate action plans, these guides might help them develop specific actions schools can take to reduce the risks of heat illness. Sea level rise is a concern for New York's coastal zones, which include New York City, Long Island, and the Mid and Lower Hudson River. A search for sea level rise projections will bring up many results, including an official data set from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. If we go to this site and scroll down, we find tables with a range of projections. For Long Island, for example, by the end of the century, sea level is expected to rise between 15 and 72 inches. The Clearinghouse contains an interactive map and GIS viewer where you can explore different layers of geographic data. Before we explore this, please note that the Clearinghouse also contains links to many other mapping tools, some of which are highlighted on the Maps page. You can also always use a keyword search to look for a map on a specific topic of interest to you. On the interactive map, you can select data layers to display on the left. Let's look at a layer that shows the extent of coastal flooding for different amounts of sea level rise and different storm strengths. The controls on the Legend and Map Controls tab allow us to vary those parameters, and let's choose 36 inches of sea level rise, a value that's close to the medium projection for Long Island at the end of this century in the data set we saw earlier. Then we have to choose a storm return. We'll choose a 50-year storm, which means that this is a storm that has a 1 in 50 chance of happening in a given year. Now we're going to use the Location tab to zoom in on Hewlett Harbor, Long Island. We see flooded streets and neighborhoods in this scenario. We can turn on other layers to look at other impacts. For example, in the Public Health folder we find a layer that shows locations of hospitals, and we can see some hospitals that would be flooded. We can also turn on transportation layers that show roads with high traffic and railroad lines. You can probably see how a map like this could be a useful tool for a town planner. Students can also use it to explore the impacts of climate change and to focus in on their own location, as well as other places. The Clearinghouse also contains a climate data grapher that your students can use to explore historical and projected climate change data. You'll find it by clicking on the Data tab on the home page or on the blue bar on any page. As with the Maps page, you'll find links to many other data products on the Data page. 
With the Climate Data Grapher, you can create time series plots of climate data. You can choose from different geographic units, states, which includes New York and other northeastern states, counties, river basins, and individual weather stations. In this example, we're going to choose a weather station in New York City's Central Park. This station has been collecting high-quality data since the 1860s. You can plot many different weather variables, and you can choose averages over different time periods, annual, seasonal, and monthly. Here we'll start by plotting annual average temperature. The points are averages for each year from 1869 to the most recent year, and the solid line is a five-year running mean. With this plot, students can do some basic analysis. For example, you could ask students to look at any 10-year interval in the plot and to describe what the data show. Most 10-year intervals show a lot of fluctuation in annual average temperature. One can't see a climate trend in a 10-year interval, but one sees evidence of the natural variability that's inherent in our weather. Some years are warmer or colder than others, or have unusually cold or warm seasons that affect the average temperature. However, if you then ask students to look at longer intervals, a long-term upward trend in temperature is clear. Climate change is not just about temperature, and we can look at plots of precipitation. This plot shows total annual precipitation from 1869 to the present, and you could ask students to describe how things have changed from the more distant past, say the period of 1869 to about 1970, to more recent decades, say 1970 to the present. What we see is that in recent decades, New York City has generally had more precipitation than in the past, and that the total precipitation amount has become more variable from year to year. That is, the data have a larger spread in recent times. Students can download the data that's plotted here into a spreadsheet and calculate means and standard deviations of the data for these time periods. For projections of future climate from climate models, you need to look at data averaged over states, counties, or river basins. Climate models don't have fine enough granularity to predict future climate at a specific point, such as a weather station's location. In this example, we're looking at data for New York County, and we're plotting extreme heat, number of days per year where the maximum temperature is above 90 degrees. The data points are observed data, and the pink and blue regions are the results of 32 different climate models, providing projections up to the end of the 21st century. The top of the pink region is the highest model result. The bottom of the blue region is the lowest modeled result. The boundary line between pink and blue shows the mean modeled result. Also important to note is that you can plot model results for two different greenhouse gas emission scenarios, called RCP 4.5 and RCP 8.5. RCP stands for Representative Concentration Pathway and describes how well we do in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. In RCP 4.5, we do a good job at cutting emissions, and in RCP 8.5, we continue with high emissions. Notice that the axis scales remain fixed for both scenarios, so you can more easily compare the results from the two different ones. This video has shown just a few examples of the many tools and resources on the New York State Climate Change Science Clearinghouse. We invite you to explore more at nyclimatescience.org.